I'm gonna put it on my crotch. Uh, and with that, phone. welcome to the awesome cast. Fuzzwads with us, accordion in hand. There he is. What episode is it? <laughs> uh, 125? 125? What? Nice square number there. I think so. Sure. Yeah, I think it was 124 we did last week. We are live at PodCamp Pittsburgh 7. Let's put it. Hey, there we are. There we are. Um, yeah, we have a crowd. Yeah. It sounds like a lot of people in here. It does. Uh, it sounds you, like a lot. It, it's it's great. It's great. This uh, is our weekly audience. This is our weekly audience. This is everybody that's in the chat room. Just happened to be here. A representative. Yeah. A representative amount. Like a nice cross section yeah. thing. I am Mike Sorg. This is the podcast where we get uh, techy. We uh, we like to uh, drop the mic, nerd wise. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. We will do a little bit of that. David Mansueto isn't here. David Mansueto is not here, but that might have to change uh, for a future episode after last night. Um, so uh, with me, of course, is uh, my cohort Chachi. Not behind the board. No. You're not controlling things this you week. Are. I am. I am. Since we're doing a remote thing, Rob De La Prada. Yeah, and I took like a month off. You're here. And then like next week. You're, you're not like across the country. No. And, and traveling or coming from us from a city. Two of the people we replaced you with are in the room currently. They are, they are. The author is in North Carolina and probably wouldn't show up here anyway. True. Yeah, yeah. And of course, starting off with us is uh, Frank the Fuzzwad. He's only going to speak in accordion this entire time, folks. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Really angry. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we're doing a little bit of a uh, remote kind of mini version of what we do in the studio. Uh, we usually use a little bit better cameras. I just kind of the one that we had in here for streaming for the Vivo stuff, uh, which that's a just a kind of a handy cam kind of situation. And uh, we got these little uh, webcams thanks to our friends at Ion Tank. Um, and uh, that's what we're doing everything else with, so we can kind of still do, if you're on the live stream, doing a multi-cam sort of situation. Uh, actually, this is my eyesight, so uh, so I can get some nice glory. There you go, Josh. There you go. Um, so yeah, it's PodCamp. Um, <laughs> no, seriously. Okay, okay, anyways, anyways, that's good. So we have blazed Chachi. We have a glazed Chachi. All right, it's pod camp. Let's first let's go down the panel here. Um, what 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 do you think from pod camp? What do you think of pod camp this year? I can't. You're the wrong it. person to ask. Rob Taylor Crane. No, no this is this is the first session I've been in. <laughs> <laughs> Which is he's been operating the cameras and making sure they're running. So that's been interesting too. So have you had any good conversations in the hallway? About uh, other than the one about Batman and uh, mm-hmm. and That's, how Bruce Wayne like helps the community when he screws up a neighborhood as Batman or something like that. Um, we're looking for a fifty thousand dollars sponsor for next year. For here, <laughs> uh, what 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 was the? <laughs> remember where this goes. Fifty thousand um, enough for that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Things, okay, what are you going to do? What what, what is Pod Camp going to do with fifty thousand dollars next year? Uh, uh, presuming they let us back at Point Park at this point. Point Park was uh, this particular bu- or not this one, the other building that we're in is an old bank and it has these vaulted ceilings with glass panels in the roof. Yeah. Well, I, I decided that it would be awesome if we could get someone dressed as Batman to just crash through the glass. Right away. In 1989 where you dropped in on the Joker in the right. museum thingy. And yeah. we, we discussed it and we think 50000 is pretty much enough to replace that reasonable. To replace all the damage. We can, start, we can start courting people right now. Yeah. So uh, get on that, Missy. Get on that. <laughs> yep. Yep. Fifty sorry. grand. I'm, I'm playing the Twitter game. I'm sorry. Fifty, 50 grand. grand. Twitter game. Okay. She's winning the Twitter game. Yeah. Uh, Rob. Uh, I, I, I can only say your full name now. How's it going? Hey. So what have you uh, been in? What have I been in? You've been around. You're around taking pictures. Uh, I've I've really only attended one session on purpose. Besides, <laughs> besides this one. I'm glad you could show up. Um, I went to Sean's session this morning. Mm-hmm. Um, only because I heard him talk about it briefly at the keynote. This I didn't really intend on going to do Okay, and is that, we're going to get into that. And we're going to talk to sort of kind of some of the things he was touching on. Okay, okay, yeah. anything else? Um, <laughs> uh, 
Um, I don't know. I mean, we've all kind of acknowledged that this year is a uh, we kind of a realignment. We talked about on the show. Yeah, last it's always week, like, like an elastic push and pull with PodCamp as far as um, also there's this weird we're used to looking at screens where we do podcasts thing. Now there's people. I don't want to look at any of these. Oh hey, <laughs> hey guys! You uh, can't turn the dick off for like an hour. Each and every week, you're an asshole. Every time you turn it off, it might not come back on when you need it to. <laughs> Damn it, Rob. Don't be a dick. So, <laughs> uh, right. So in the past, we've had pod camps that were like uh, more, more 101 oriented, but it was always mixed with more of the ethereal, theoretical sort of managing hypothetical data type stuff, and we kept getting pushed more in the 101 direction, so this year we focused a lot of our sessions on still blogging 101, podcasting 101, stuff like that, and people are into it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's not, I mean, I feel like as people who have been here for four years, if I was still attending 101 sessions, I should really reconsider my life. <laughs> but, but, there's, <laughs> but there's always always somebody that's going to need that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So. And, and we see new people every year, and all the new people are here this year, and it's all, it's all new faces, too. It's like a full flush. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So... Yeah. I'm not sure you know how to use Twitter. I don't even know what the internet is. Right. So you need to go back and watch all of the sessions. I'll all of them. Right I'll go watch my own session. <laughs> <laughs> um, Frank. Hi. Oh, you're not speaking and recording now. Good, it's good. Um, so okay. what, what, no. what are no. your impressions? No. <laughs> what are your impressions so, uh, so far at PodCamp? Um, this is my third PodCamp, and it's been drastically different from the other two. Because, like, just thinking about the uh, general theme of the different sessions, uh, two years ago at uh, PodCamp 5, I was at, um, it was a lot more on uh, a lot of the, um, like, blogging style type stuff. Like, yeah, put your hand in, hand in front of the camera. That works, too. <laughs> this makes Frank look a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're adjusting you. Your head was getting a little cut off there. So, okay. But, yeah, I noticed that... Um, to, Two years ago, it was uh, a lot more with um, with just focusing on a lot of blogging and social interaction. Mm-hmm. Last year, there was a lot more podcasting worked into it, and this year, it was a lot different because th- there was a whole lot more of the business aspect of things. Yes, yes. Which was kind of weird because I I don't do any kind of social media professionally, but just finding out a lot of the different things. Uh, that you can do like the one session that uh, I, I was running a camera like Chachi was um, but the first session that I sat in on doing that was a session about looking at all the different ways you can use analytics all the different sources for analytics and it's I didn't realize that there were that many different uh, sources or measurements or all that kind of stuff so that was a really interesting one and then um, there was also a really good session that uh, John Carmen did earlier today that was all about how to properly set up a, um, a Facebook or a Twitter uh, business page just so that all of your uh, pixel sizes, uh, your picture sizes are like right where they should be. Mm-hmm. That's, just, that's, the I, one, that's the one where he gave you like the checklist, right? Of what yeah. to do with the page. I need to get a copy of that because I, I, I do pages, but I'm just I, wondering, if, am I missing something that he's doing? You know? Yeah, there's so many little things in there. I, I never would have thought that just making a Facebook page look good was mm-hmm. like there were the, that meant that much minute detail in it. Mm-hmm. It's things you don't think about. Yeah. And the big thing you mentioned a little bit of podcasting. I, holy crap with the podcasting this year, mm-hmm. you know? Like I, I felt like like certain years I felt like I was the only one doing something, and now it's like every session there's something going on. It felt like like all at least over in this building, like I saw you know literally like one podcast session every every time. The audio shocker guys were really good. Emily had a lot of the ideas uh, that we used for this show and the mayhem show. Um, I, I uh, the Lipson guys were doing some good ones about how you know one was how how to podcast like just using your iPad or just using your iPhone. Um, which is cool for like some mobile stuff, you know. I mean, I, you know, we're doing video, so this is a little more complicated. I like love to get when we get to that point. But if we were just doing this as an audio podcast, I could come in here with my iPad, you know, just have a couple. You have to buy a couple connectors and all that kind of stuff, and we're good to go. You know, I, it was really great for that stuff. Um, the other thing, the other thing uh, I always like to do at a podcast is kind of device watch. 
Now you're you're you are the only an, uh, Android tablet I've seen this weekend. Yeah. By I, the way, I have not seen any others. I've been every time I see somebody with a I keyboard. I saw, one. I saw one. Did you see one? Yeah. Who had one? I don't, some guy had a real clunky plastic case on it. Oh yeah, he's yeah. trying to hide it. Is that it? <laughs> it's like it's like I don't want, I don't want to get swamped. I want I don't. I mean, get... it was kind of it was a uh, it was an older man. He was uh, looked like to be in his maybe his forties or something. So if you've seen this guy, <laughs> now I know what he's twittering at. Kick him in the shin. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I'm curious. I want to see because I I hear it, some people are really excited about. It. Like, it's always really like, interesting it's, it's... to like to see because we talk about this stuff a lot. But yeah. it's, it's, I mean, I see it a lot when I travel. Um, I kind of like creepily spy on people using the devices in airports mm-hmm. um but like i was i was sitting next to not i was standing next to this guy during the keynote yesterday and i was watching him like browse he had his his little android whatever and uh and a piece of paper that had the schedule on it and he was browsing the descriptions of each session on his tablet and then like circling and putting x's on his schedule so an interesting cross-section of the paper and the digital yeah going exactly on, yeah. um but he like the impression that I get is, you know, he walked into a Verizon store or whatever and said, "Show me your tablets." Mm-hmm. <laughs> Show me all the tablets. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and most of the stuff I'm seeing, like again, every time, you know, we we've seen from and somebody even tweeted yesterday, like, yeah, you know, I remember seeing just all laptops and stuff a couple of years ago, and now it really is all, you know, seems to be all. Uh, iPads. It's, it's you know, yeah, it's the iPads with the keyboard docks. Be, that's the thing Ton this year. Those. Almost everyone has a keyboard talk of yeah. some sort. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm like, is that Surface? I, this is the first thing I've seen that many iPad keyboards going on at one time. I don't want to carry a full laptop, but I'll I'll carry the, the you know keyboard combo kind of situation. Um, yeah, it, you know, versus like you know when we first started, you know, it was like big laptops for the most part and notepads because not everybody had a laptop back then. Mm-hmm. Back in what 2007 are we thinking? Yeah, that's where we started, right? Sure. Um, yeah, yeah, and 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 you know, people people taking notes on their iPhones. People, you know, that's of course, you know, grown up big. And remember the first year when the iPhone had just come out and like two people had them, yeah. and they got mobbed. That's why the Surface guy was hiding his, right? Oh, there was a Surface here. Well, he, he was just saying, yeah, he, he saw something with Surface. Ah. Um, so I mean, that's still a curiosity about yeah. that. Not not as much as like what these guys were when they first came out, but still. All right, let's go. Anything, anything else, Frankie? You, you, you saw over the weekend you, before we let you go here. No. All right. I'll so, just play intro music for people now. <laughs> he's got a gig. He's got. If you want to hire Frank, <laughs> at Fuzzwad on Twitter to do your thing. All right. I think Sean, you're uh, on deck here. Oh, I like this. I feel like we're David Letterman or something with the intro music. This is great. This is great. We should do this. Uh, really. No? Out of everyone on TV. I figured... <laughs> everyone! <laughs> well, you I... have an entire cable lineup John's, of people that John do Stewart? talk shows. I don't have cable. I don't have cable. Just please don't reference... Uh, okay, you... George, how about George Lopez? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna... <laughs> Hold on. Wait a minute. This just got worse. John Graham. How you doing? Good, good. Can I tell you, Conan O'Brien, people probably like him, but that whole refresh and they created that stupid Team Coco and all that, like... Oh, but Tim, Team Coco was the greatest. Oh, uh, there you go. You get the rally behind it, man. Yeah, so. Like, this guy got screwed by the system that yeah. is NBC. It only made millions for taking a year off. It was terrible. <laughs> terrible fight awful. for Team Coco. It so bad. He, got, yeah. he felt so bad, he grew a beard. Yeah. If I put yeah. the camera right, if I put my bottle right there. I don't know. It's not, well, that one, that one's not working. No. Oh. That one's not working. Take away all It lies with that blue light, apparently. So, uh, tip: a lot of times they don't like if you put two of the same camera into one computer. Hmm. It, uh, yeah, it doesn't work. How out long too have well. we been using yeah. computers? Com- in general, yeah. In, at least like, a as a whole, at least at least a few weeks. A few weeks. I'm new here. Apparently, you started yesterday. You I'm went to Computing here. 101 yesterday. Did you um, miss that? Mm, mm. So, Sean, what do you do? Yeah. So I work with small businesses around marketing. Um, I also uh, blog about small business. And uh, and then the other part, I, I sort of have two different lenses that I think about blogging. I also blog for Fast Company Magazine. And um, so that allows me to sort of talk to startups doing interesting stuff, much of which involves technology. Um, and other than that, I like to do a lot of people watching and uh, take long walks on the beach. Creepy. Yeah. Sometimes at the same time. Mm. 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 Well, blogging. Yes. Yes. Mm. Mm. All right then. 
Well, the reason you can I, go uh, now. Yeah, yeah, we're done here. <laughs> the reason go. I brought outro music. I thought this was going to go a different way, but okay. The reason I brought him on is he uh, is privy to a very special copy of Entertainment Weekly that has been kind of a buzz over the last two weeks or so. Oh. Um, this particular. Ooh, uh, for those of you at home, he's holding up a magazine. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this particular copy of Entertainment Weekly is sort of a uh, an experimental prototypey electronic device thing. You flip open to the inside, you find the gigantic piece of cardboard holding an advertisement for the CW, which is actually a tiny phone embedded inside the magazine. Uh, they're using it to reach out to the interwebs and pull down uh, live ads and a Twitter feed. And it works like a Hallmark card. So you open it, and, it, and a little tab moves, and then it says, Welcome! As it does right now. So you didn't rip it open? Mashable did. Mashable did. Oh. Mashable did. They Mashable did it so it. you didn't have to. Mashable right. got it. That's right. And it turns out it is actually a, uh, a Blackberry, like a Chinese knockoff of a Blackberry. Um, and they just, they paid somebody to build this cool thing and, and hack it or whatever. Oh, but, yeah, um, yeah, hold that up to the camera a little bit closer. Yeah, we can. Yeah. yeah. Now this was, and this was a limited run. Yeah, there was. They made like a thousand what, of them, right? Yeah. 1,500? Yeah. Yeah, and it was only in I, LA and New York, was it? And Cranberry Township. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, it's Dave Mansueto. <laughs> hey! We're just talking about you. That's funny. Wow. Uh, yeah, so we've got this thing here. Um, do you want to talk about it for a minute? Why it's interesting to you? Yeah, so why it's interesting to me is we're at this this space, and I talked a little bit about it in the, the session on images, but there's this um, trying to blur the physical and virtual worlds that we have. We have these mobile devices and we have all these different things. We haven't really figured it out. And I think right around the time, it's interesting to me that as everybody sort of moved to e-readers, Newsweek decided they're not going to print anymore. Um, it's, it's interesting that Entertainment Weekly was experimenting with this. And as we think about interactive and immersive experiences, it's one thing to say, follow us on Twitter or whatever. Um, this is a bit clunky. It's, it's, uh, it, it, it looks like an old, old fashioned prototype that you would sort of mock up. But what's interesting is the technology gets smaller um, and more sophisticated. What could this be? So I think it's interesting that like you could still have a traditional print publication and you could actually interact with it instead of making you pull out your smartphone, find them on Twitter, and then sit there and tweet. So I, I think it's a, it's a really interesting blurring the lines between the physical and virtual and, and more so like what that means in the next two years. Like what could this be? So that's why I find it interesting. How, it also allows uh, me to, to look at previews for the CW sure. Network. It's one of my favorite things to do. Sure. Hey, Arrow's a pretty good show. I know they have an ad for Arrow. Yeah. It, just, it just plays over and over. Yeah. How long have you had that? So I, I saw the Mashable clip. So, so yeah, one of the things that was interesting is I saw the Mashable video, and I thought that's pretty cool. So then I did what everybody that would think that this would be cool would do, is I hopped in my car and went to the Barnes & Noble in Cranberry. Um, it was, this came out October 5th. Um, and so it was, I think it was, I might've even went on the third and I said, uh, Hey, I'm looking for this. And I found it on the shelf and I flipped through it and I sort of had the sense that maybe they just weren't, there weren't like going to be 30 of them in Cranberry. Um, but I didn't know there was a limited release. So I found this issue, flipped through every page, went and asked the people at the kiosk. They had no idea what I was talking about. And that's when the journey began to, to the, <laughs> the quest for this magazine. So, so I've had it since, uh, it took a little while, uh, and, the, the package got a little chewed up in transit, surprisingly, so I probably had it since the 8th or something like that. Because so. I'm, I'm impressed that, like, I assume you've been playing with it quite a bit since you got it, and the battery is still... And that's one of the things in, in Mashable. I mean, it, it is a BlackBerry, and, and I can't remember in the video if they put a backup. I, like, I didn't go in and start... Um, it's like a backup battery or yeah, something. Yeah, so it's... Uh, but, the, you know, the, the interesting thing, and we had it in the other session, is, um, one, it's like a Hallmark card, so when you open it up, that's what activates it. But then if you... Uh, I failed geometry in high school, but I think it's probably 45 degrees. So whenever you close the magazine just enough, just it sort bit. of recycles. Right. And then it, and it's it can be a little bit slow. So then you got to start and go through the ads again to get to the Twitter feed. Uh, so anyway, it's uh, I don't know how long the battery will last because you got to keep recycling if you unless you keep it very still. Right. And the other thing is it it obviously doesn't have it's not like uh, BlackBerry you have to wait for it to boot. Like you open the page and it takes maybe a second right the screen's there and it says welcome and everything's working yeah so it goes welcome and then it cycles through some of their ads the interesting thing to me too is because it's a blackberry I, there's no audio so you'd think that one of the things that maybe would even make this a little bit more interesting especially because you're showing video clips would be to have some kind of audio to keep you yeah. in because the challenge that, that i see is like by the time you get to the twitter feed and um so so how long are you going to stick around to get to guy? the twitter feed and that's the they, you know they push a few of their ads through 
and then you Figures. ultimately get to the Twitter feed. Right. Um, I'm wondering if because it's all it's all like you know prototypey hardware, and, and like you said, it's sort of that like the tech has become available and it's become cheap enough that this is a thing you can try, and if it fails, nobody really cares. Right. Whereas even two years ago, the concept of getting a phone to work like that and connect actually right. is mind-boggling, let alone having it load faster than like five minutes. And it could have been that like they had speakers on it, but they pulled them because it would have killed the battery in a day. Right. Well, and I think to your point, there's a couple interesting from a small business or a nonprofit or just uh, somebody that's looking for a new hobby. I think what's really cool about this is as much as this is a big fancy magazine, this prototype almost looks like if you just mock it up the way you'd think it should look, I mean, it's it's big yeah. and cardboardy. I mean, if you flip through this magazine, you would know something's up <laughs> with this giant page, yeah. right? And that there's something in there. What what I think's awesome for me is devices keep getting smaller. Connectivity hopefully keeps getting better. You're right. Like if you went in in uh, 2005, BlackBerry would probably be six hundred dollars at Verizon or whatever it was. So the fact that um, you know, I'm sure that because it's a BlackBerry, they got it pretty cheap. Um, but as the, the technology gets cheaper and smaller, and also with some of the experimentation that they're doing in development around flexible display screens, um, I don't know that it's always going to be a tablet. Like, why couldn't you have um, the ability to have the same experience of having an old magazine, but have it be digital? And you even see that with some of the stuff in Maya Design, like where they have a, it's like a hologram magazine where they project the image, which is cool, but I don't know what it really does. But it's uh, so I think there's some interesting um, user experiences that could come from stuff like this that we haven't seen. So right, yeah, it's a lot about instead of just uh, instead of just taking the route of you know the old idea is printed and the new idea is completely digital. At least experimenting with the concept. Like, don't get me wrong, I hate this and I think it's dumb. <laughs> but <laughs> time out. <laughs> I hate when, something I know. It's crazy. When like, don't you say that when about it's, anything? When it's like well executed and it makes sense. Like how many eighty-year-old ladies threw that away or tried to tear it open well, looking for the free sample that was that's inevitably That's what I'm curious about because if you look at it, they actually made it easy to tear out that section it's of the not magazine. Easy to do it all. I mean, no, it's no like, to remove this entire ad. Remove it's rather the whole easy. thing. I don't want to pull it, but it's that sticky tack stuff that they usually put on the back of the subscribe cards but it's glued down if you yeah. watch the full video on mashable really? i mean they pull yeah. it and I, I think the the blackberry budget was probably 38 cents yeah the glue stick or hot glue gun budget was probably 52 dollars and, 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 <laughs> and then the ad down. was probably yeah. ten thousand. it is broken down it's not like it's an entire black very hardware thing. It's like yeah, basically it's the components down. they absolutely needed. Like you, if you really wanted to make use of this, you have to figure out which diode on it or whatever is which key and, and that sort of thing and, and kind of create the rest of the phone. Mm -hmm. So what, what I thought was funny when, when I first watched the video, and, I, and it's been a while, but the guy's like, uh, there's this strange black substance on it. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm going, I think it's electrical tape. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's it's tape. You know? and, then, and then when he flips it over, there's sort of that epiphany where he's like, because you could see the little connectors and, and it, the, oh, there must be a BlackBerry keypad there. And then he gets that aha moment where he's like, this is a clone BlackBerry. And then it yeah. boots up in Chinese mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, and then I, I, don't, I didn't watch the whole thing to see if they made a call, but that was, they were, you know, everybody's trying yeah. to figure out because it's connected. Can I use this to call wherever? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and I think there was, I, didn't look it up, but I, I have a vague memory in my head of somebody did get one of these and hack it and make a phone call just to see if they could. And it's it is actually a fully with, functional phone without putting like another SIM in it or something. Yeah. Like somebody, yeah, or like, they were able to use like emergency nine one one that was built into it or something. I don't know. Huh. And, and sadly, really you know, Newsweek's ads. probably like, where was this three weeks ago? It's like wedding or uh, wedding singer where he's like things I wish wish I would have known three weeks ago. Now, um, now I'm wondering uh, if this thing like has a GPS on it. So is this thing being tracked? It could be. Well, that's a whole nother. GPS yeah. I mean, would be a battery hug, though. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But I mean, but it, if you but did it smart, it could kind of call in. Yeah, if they took up the in, entire page with a battery. Like, let's do that, like, oh, no, like, like let's let's check yeah. in once a week or something like that, right? Just for a little bit to see if, uh, you if know, If you leave the page open long enough so it doesn't turn itself off. Yeah, exactly. I'm just, well, I, I'm just kind of playing with it. I do the same thing with those cars that you were just talking about. That's what where, you do. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm the kind of guy that wonders if the light actually stays on when I close the refrigerator door. It doesn't. Um, I know, right? The gnomes take care of it. It's I can okay. put a GoPro camera in there and find out. It doesn't. Okay. Um, you but don't yeah. have to. Wow. I can answer that question for you. But yeah, so it's it's you know, and the GoPro's for the extreme cold. For as much as we want so to solve the digital problem just by pushing everything onto a Kindle or a tablet. 
the interaction is consistently a problem for us. Like from the moment that we decided that we could create fire, we're like, we now have tools that come between us and something useful. So that's an interaction. And since then, that interaction has become more and more complicated. Like you consider like just that basic example of like flint and steel to make spark to make fire. And now we have like lighters and we have like digital butane magic things, right? <laughs> You can go crazy and get a, a laser that will... I have lasers in my studio that you can light things on fire with. These are all extremely complicated ways, but realistically, you're still just playland. trying to make fire. It's a technological <laughs> playland. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's, it's weird because I, you know, I hate it and it's stupid, but it's important that, especially that companies like Entertainment Weekly, like Entertainment Weekly didn't make that. Neither did the CW. They called an agency. And the agency called four dudes in a derelict warehouse somewhere and you said, and can you friends. build us something that kind of looks like a bomb? Yeah, what did you say to them? But oh. isn't? <laughs> so, you know, so, some guys that are did podcasts from a shipping container. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's, what happens here is the trickle-down effect of a publishing you know, in industry that is sort of like grasping at straws to figure out what the smart move is to make so they don't fail. And that trickles down into dudes who don't have huge budgets getting given a lot of money to say like, you're smart, you're good with electronics, make us something cool and we'll see if it works. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's like advertising is an R and D for these new concepts. Absolutely. So that, that, that's great. So I'm waiting for a hologram. And, 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 yeah. And I think it's, it's, it's maybe less about what this is, but it's like, what <laughs> could it be? Right. Yeah. So this yeah, is yeah. a, this is a big, random first step the next one will that, be better the next one will be better until yeah. they're able to do something good enough that it does make sense it doesn't make rob angry yeah right? or they well, just i don't think that's gonna happen no that's true that's true yeah or they can you know it's it's a first step in the direction of figuring out whether or not that makes sense yeah on this mm -hmm. quest to really figure out what interactive means because interactive mm -hmm. now still means pull out smartphone stare at smartphone or whatever yeah and all the like, steps in between yeah when's mm -hmm. it more immersive mm -hmm. and, and i think this is a big step in that direction exactly yeah. well thanks sean thank for you very much us. I'm waiting for the hologram. The hologram? Yeah. So Rocky yeah, 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 yeah. Buns, you want on? I, I, I'm waiting for the day I open a magazine and see some some guy that looks like Rob Gunn. <laughs> In a magazine. So, uh, Mike, Mike Munz, say wow. I think you're the first, this is the first time you're you've been on the show, here. right? Yeah, this is my first time joining you guys. Welcome. Thank Welcome. you. It's good to be here. I can't sit any closer. I'll be on his lap. No, no, no. Just make sure you're in frame there so you can see right there. There you go. Hi. I didn't talk to the people. Hi, people. There you go. <clears throat> that'll, that'll, that's interesting. I think I just engaged yeah. with some people. And I'm going to use Fuzzwad, like Pee Wee's Playhouse, because every time I hear that word engagement. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, let's begin of engagement. Wow, we need to have them in studio every week. Engagement. Um, what's that? Engagement. <laughs> Engaged. So, what are your thoughts on PodCamp this year? It was very engaging. I, I'm going to be Would serious. you say that this is the most engaging PodCamp yet? I haven't been this engaged since the last time I engaged with these engagers. Okay. I mean, seriously, it, it, it was one of the things that I, I really, one of the things that I really took away from PodCamp this year, and am still taking with me, was a, a, a over usage of terms. I mean, we've really beaten the word collaboration into the ground, and uh, we've really. I can't, we got to think of different ways to, to express ourselves and what we're doing and how we're interacting. I mean, you guys just brought up a great point about how the interaction media is even changing. I mean, it was a magazine to digital. That's like analog meets digital at its most purest point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And is it actually a real point of engagement where there's a decision being made, there's even something being sold? What's the takeaway from that? I mean, as a person, I mean, I gotta, did you pay more for that than you would have a regular? Magazine? I didn't pay anything. Okay, I mean, did they charge more for that? Than no, they no, no. Is the no. cover price the same? I mean, it the has cover price been. was the same for any other thing. And yeah. so, I mean, in, in my eyes, as, a, as an online advertiser, they're, they're losing. Yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. losing out on that. And it, it for what? For a little bit of a buzz, that, like you guys said, you don't even know if it's going to be permanent or not. What's the, what's the state they're, power? They're losing for the opportunity to hypothetically be on the cutting edge of something that's going to change their industry. And mm -hmm. there's their takeaway. Yeah. I mean, so it, it's obvious to some, but for the majority of the masses, who's going to know what they're actually getting from that? I mean, it's like like you said, four guys are saying, wow, we really did good. They put yeah. it in their magazine. There's 1,500 of them. Mm -hmm. So for me, I've really learned more engagement points this year 
through PodCamp than I, what I was used to in my normal digital toolbox. You know, I, I, I had a, a WordPress blog that I use as a website that I tweet. And I, for some of you who know me on Facebook, I use that as like a little mini toolbox. But all, ultimately, I'm going to walk away this year with a couple more tools in the box. That's good. To engage with. Bingo. 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 What about you guys? How are you guys liking it so far? Uh, we already had that talk. I think we, yeah, we already had a little bit. <laughs> kind of of well, yeah, the interesting part since we've been doing the streaming and I've been, you know, we we've been doing uh, provided the, uh, the cameras and some of the computers to do this. Uh, um, I've been channel surfing, basically the sessions. Yes, which is kind of a cool thing. I'm usually sitting in a session in the back, uh, supervising all the other sessions, you know, <laughs> and seeing if anything's going on in the chat room, making sure everything's going, you know. And, uh, and and so I, I'm able to pick. Like I, I dropped into your session in the middle when you're talking about like a, you know like the word downloading. What does that mean to people? You know, do we download things anymore? You know, what kind of engagement is that? You know, uh, sleeping on me. <laughs> um, but but now I was drop in and see like okay, I can check on all the other podcasting sections at least a little bit to get an idea what they're talking about. So I don't gloss over you know you know re rehash you know a lot of stuff because there's so many different people doing it this year. Um, but yeah, I mean that's been my experience since since I've been on that that side of things. You know, not really as a I'm going around attending sessions kind of. Uh, side I asked of a question at the beginning of my session. Is it narcissistic to watch your own session live during your session? <laughs> did you did you have that set up? I gotta say I did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I couldn't physically see me because I was in front of the room, but I mean I actually if I could have I would have. Mm -hmm. If my watch phone camera would have had it on there, I would have been watching it on there. How do I look at for 15 frames a second? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It does add 10 pounds. This isn't really me. Nope. 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 Yeah. I lose it, right? Well, a lot, of, a lot of people got a benefit because a lot, all of them are shooting widescreen, but they got squished a little bit in the uh, in the flash and code. I lose it in the ratio. Uh, yeah, yeah. A lot. A little bit of a ratio help. But PodCamp this year was awesome so far. I mean, it's a lot different than in years past. Um, you know, you, you live, you learn, and I think each year it kind of snowballs because people that were new last year have now amassed a technical skill that they didn't have previously and they utilized it for a year. And so they come back and they get to offer. And then this year the same thing happens. And pretty soon we're going to run out of new attendees and this is going to be everyone in Pittsburgh is going to be having a session. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, because you definitely see a lot of people that are like, uh, I remember them coming to like maybe like a Twitter one or you know blog one or one or whatever, and now they're giving a session on the subject. You know that that's really cool to see. And that's that's for me. You know, I've done a couple of sessions. It's good to see that. I I like to see the people actually learn, take away, and apply. Mm -hmm. So much is just fluff anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially I mean, every time you go and you see somebody like I'm a new media in, uh, expert or something like that. Yeah. Like I try to say, like when I explain what I do, I help people with social media. I'm not trying to sell you snake oil, you know. I like I, I'm very careful to step around that so I don't get lumped in with those. I have some. If what? You, want some. you have some snake oil. Snake oil. Yeah. Do you cook with that? Is it uh, yes? Okay. Delicious. Excellent. Like healthy. Fat free. No. No, it's oil. Mm -hmm. oh. Interesting. Well, that was a diversion. Wow. Shut up. I, I mean, My so, podcast is doing better than anyone else's podcast. Something, you, something you mentioned that you do I thought was pretty cool, and you guys are talking about like uh, gadget watching. Well, I took upon myself this year, as jaded as I am, is I, I was title watching this year. Okay. You, know, you exchange a lot of phone or a lot of uh, uh, information with people and business cards, and you see some really out there titles of people. Okay. I mean, social engineer, come on. No, well, that's the thing, though. I mean, but, but if you put that on your card, that's a little, you know, I mean, like, like I, I manipulate people is basically what that's saying. I mean, social engineering is something that I do on a daily basis. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, don't all of us to a certain point, if we're trying to sell something on Twitter, we're trying to engineer somebody to react to something. We're trying to give them an engagement point, you know, a call to action, you know. Um, I mean, that's, that. I mean, that's the base of it, you know. Um, I mean, some people take it to, uh, like, yes. Six you can, adjectives in your title. <laughs> Vice President, exactly. Director of Marketing under Research for Administration Use. dot com. I, I also I don't even like to put owner and operator of my own business on my card. You know, it's like I, I still I I'd rather just put video guy. You know, video guy. Video guy, because I'm not a videographer. I'm not. You know, I'm I, I I do this. I do you know I do editing. So I do if it has video, I can do something with it. I agree. Yeah, so. So, um, that was a very engaging discussion. <laughs> Anything else you want to touch on? No, guys, I, I thank you for having me on and I uh, just like engaging with you. 
Thank you. We'll have to engage with you in the future on the show. Um, all right. Uh, so with that, uh, maybe some closing thoughts. I want to get cut out of here early so we can get everything uh, kind of packed up and out of the next session, which is a impromptu session. Chachi, you're involved in this, right? What? Uh, he, he do just show up, don't you? Yeah. Oh, you're doing a thing in the room. Yeah, you're going to talk I am about, doing I, a thing in the room. <laughs> you're talking about video games? And social media. Where did this come from? Other than, okay, yeah, I came Your from wife. Missy. Your came wife. from my wife. My wife uh, uh, had a brainstorm in the shower this morning to do a session yeah. about video games. <laughs> yes. So did... That's where all the good ideas come from. The bathroom is a prolific place. Just to right? make this not creepy at all, so your wife was in the shower thinking about Chachi. <laughs> or or well, that just could go either way. Either, in front of a camera. either she's thinking about all of us at Pod Camp. No. Or she's thinking about video games, which actually automatically uh, no. correlates to Chachi. Mm-hmm. No? No. There is absolutely no way in which you put this to make it look better. Nope. Mm-hmm. Mm. Disengage. Nope. <laughs> Disengage. <laughs> well, what can you no do, like, do you do you do a version of a sad trombone on that thing? No, oh, I've challenged him. I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. You broke him. <laughs> nope, nope, it's not happening. All right, on that point. Uh, whoa! He just he just did the slam. He's done. He's done. It's like I'm out. Drop the mic. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's my apple drop. All right. Uh, um, well, um, well, real quick. Favorite session? Favorite session? Mine. Yeah. The only one you went to. Never mind. These are the wrong people for me to ask yeah. this question. <laughs> <laughs> I only went to one. I'm going hey, to another one. one. You know what? High five for that. Hey. All right. We're from the we audience, we, let's have a little bit of engagement. Shout out. What, what was your favorite sessions? Wait, someone had long titles, didn't they? Yeah. Quickly. Anybody? <laughs> this one. Yay! Yay! Which one I've been to? The next one. Yeah. Yeah. The one I didn't go to. There you go. This one, the next one, and the one I didn't go to. Those are some great answers. I don't know if they came up on the mic. Silent film. (laughs) Sounds like a a bad joke. Um. All right. With that, thanks, Rob Daily Credit. He's at Rob J D L C on the Twitters and uh, dot com. He is awesome. Sometimes when he's not being a dick. IonTank.com. Yep, IonTank.com, who provides the fantastic Twitter fall and schedule screens. Yep. They're so thin. They're super thin. They're so thin. Yeah. Um, Chachi? What? Where do people find you? Twitter? Here. Yeah. At Chachi <laughs> Physically in this Here, little the next square session, and not at the one that I didn't intend. Right. Yeah. I, I will be here for the next hour. <laughs> okay. For everybody else that finds you later when they download this. I am on Twitter. Okay. The on all of the Twitter? Uh, I'm, the I thing. am Twitter. <laughs> if you're using Twitter, you're using chat. Anytime you send a tweet, it goes through me. Our special... <laughs> <laughs> so that's why it's always slimy when it gets to me. <laughs> At Chachi says it's Twitter, insert coin to begin.com. I'll do it for you. I'm at Sorgatron. Everything else, please check out everything at sorgatronmedia.com where we put all the fine, fine podcasts and sometimes the not so fine ones. Mm-hmm. Chachi. Um, uh, of course, uh, we are here every, not this week, you'll be doing a Turntable FM uh, <laughs> show apparently while I'm not there on Tuesday. Yeah. Since we're doing this um, now. Sorg is taking Tuesday off and so I'm well, I'm, I'm working. I'm just, Shut up. <laughs> so I'm, I'm scrapping the show, and it will be 59 minutes and 59 seconds of Turntable FM. Wow. At live. Yeah. That was that was great that you got to attend the, the the party last night without t- attending. You got blast. to influence the musical stylings of the party as part of the Turntable FM yeah. uh, room there. Well, originally, and then yell at me when I wasn't paying attention to my playlist. Yeah. yeah. Well, I went in with the intention to just rickroll everyone right off the bat. I don't think I heard a Rick Roll. Yeah, you did because it was the fourth song. I'm sorry, I was back. In, I was back in the. Po- yeah, I was back in the pod camp lounge. I couldn't yeah. entirely hear Jen, everything. Then you got to the Rick Roll before Chachi could. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. There you go. So, um, and uh, with that, we're on, we're on Twitter at AwesomeCast. We're on <laughs> Facebook. We're on Google Plus. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, live. is yeah. the chat room where whenever we do. Oh, if you want to join him, seven p.m. Room. Eastern. What? You just said chat room. Chat room where. Good ideas are born. Uh, with that, thank you <laughs> to our awesome chat room that I hope is out there somewhere. This show title. Uh, thank you. You have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Thank you.